Welcome to the SignalTap Logic Analyzer online training. My name is Steve. While watching the training, use the controls at the bottom and side of the screen to navigate to any point. Feel free to pause the training at any time to experiment with the software. By the end of this training, you will understand the many advantages of using the SignalTap Embedded Logic Analyzer for debugging your FPGA designs. You'll see just how easy it is to add the logic analyzer to your designs and configure it for your unique debugging needs. You'll be able to take the signal data captured by the logic analyzer, analyze it, and use it for further debugging, for documentation purposes, or to get a better understanding of how your design works. Finally, you'll learn about some of the additional features of the ELA that go beyond the standard system debugging flow but help make the task of verifying and debugging designs even easier. Here is the agenda for this four-part training. In part one, you got an introduction to the SignalTap Embedded Logic Analyzer, including a quick start guide for implementing and using the Logic Analyzer. In part two, you learned how to set up basic trigger conditions and choose options for the operation of the Logic Analyzer. In part three, we looked at the flexible state-based triggering flow learned about compiling and recompiling a design that includes the logic analyzer and about programming a device with that design. In this final part, we'll cover options for running the logic analyzer and examine some more advanced features available in the tool to help simplify the debugging process. With the target device programmed with the logic analyzer, we can finally run the logic analyzer and analyze the data captured for debugging purposes. When describing the operation of a logic analyzer, the terms run or running are often used. Running the logic analyzer means to start its monitoring of trigger-enabled signals, looking for the combination of signal states that satisfy the trigger conditions. This is also sometimes referred to as arming the logic analyzer, a term often used with external test equipment. All operation of the logic analyzer is controlled by four buttons in the Instance Manager. Select a compiled and ready instance in the Instance Manager to make these buttons available. The Run Analysis button starts a logic analyzer instance's monitoring for the trigger conditions. If multiple instances exist, you can run them all simultaneously by shift or control clicking the desired instances and clicking Run Analysis. The Stop Analysis button does exactly what it says. It stops the logic analyzer from continuing to look for the trigger conditions. You may want to use this if the trigger conditions are not occurring. The data samples currently in the buffer will be displayed when you stop the analysis. Auto Run Analysis behaves similarly to the Run Analysis button except that the logic analyzer keeps running even after the trigger occurs. The data display gets updated every time this happens, providing a continuous update on the status of the monitored signals. Again, you can stop the analysis at any time. Finally, the Read Data button transfers any captured data from the buffer on the device to the signal tap file. This is used if, for some reason, data is not automatically transferred or the JTAG connection was lost temporarily. It is often desirable to simply capture signal data without waiting for a trigger event to occur. This is called a force trigger because the logic analyzer is being forced to capture data without waiting for a trigger event. On some external test equipment, occasionally there is a button reserved specifically for performing this operation. Force triggering is more applicable to the sequential trigger flow since there is less control with that flow. You can create custom force triggers with the state-based flow. There are multiple ways to perform a force trigger. First, you can simply run the logic analyzer and stop it immediately, capturing data at that point. To do this, simply disable all trigger conditions with the checkboxes at the top of each column. This is a much quicker way of doing this than setting all signals in all the trigger condition columns to don't care. A second way to perform a force trigger is to run the logic analyzer and stop it at some desired time instead of immediately. 
the buffer is captured and transferred to the signal tab file window at that point. To do this, define a trigger condition that will never happen and start an analysis. When the logic analyzer is stopped manually, the current signal data is captured for display. While not a true force trigger, you can also use the auto run analysis option instead of the standard run analysis to continue running the logic analyzer even after the trigger has occurred. You can choose when to stop the logic analyzer to see the data in the buffer at that moment in time. When the trigger occurs, the capture data is stored in the memory buffer, transferred to the signal tab file, and displayed in the data tab. The data tab is the main interface for immediately viewing captured data. The logic analyzer will automatically switch to the data tab when data is transferred from the buffer. So even if the trigger did not occur, you can still view what was in the buffer when the logic analyzer was stopped. By default, the horizontal scale of the display indicates buffer sample numbers, one for every rising edge of the sampling clock. You can right-click the scale and select time units to display actual time delays between captured samples. When viewing sample numbers, the sample captured at the trigger is considered sample zero, and pre-trigger data samples, samples captured in the buffer before the trigger occurred, have positive numbers and are displayed to the right of the trigger. Post-trigger samples have negative sample numbers and are to the left of the trigger. If the viewing of data discontinuities for storage qualification is enabled, as discussed earlier, extra markers are displayed to indicate where samples were skipped from being stored in the buffer. By default, the data tab provides a waveform display of all the data-enabled signals in the node list. Grouped signals have data displayed in a radix of the user's choosing. You can change the radix or view the grouped signal data in different ways, such as a bar or line graph, by right-clicking on the signal group name in the column on the left and selecting a view option. You can also use a mnemonic table for the group data. This was discussed for setting up trigger conditions on the Setup tab, but it can be used in the same way here to display captured data on the Data tab. Controls in the Data tab make it easy to move around the captured data quickly. The trigger position is indicated by a dashed line located at Data Sample 0. Everything in the waveform display is referenced to the Master Time Bar, a thick black bar that is initially placed at the trigger position but can be dragged anywhere in the data. The numbers above the master time bar indicate the current segment in a segmented buffer and the current sample within that segment. The previous and next transition buttons will move the master time bar to the next or previous transition of a selected signal. One or more reference time bars can be added to the display by simply clicking at the top of the view. Reference time bars indicate their location with respect to the master time bar. The top number indicates the segment difference between the master and reference time bars in a segmented buffer. Reference time bars can be used to measure the time between signal transitions or certain events. Left-clicking a waveform zooms in to make it easy to see individual samples. Right-clicking zooms out. If the trigger sample is not visible because of a zoom in operation, select Center Waveform on Trigger from the View menu to shift the trigger sample to the middle of the display. The captured data can be exported to the multiple file formats listed here for use in other tools or for documentation purposes. Export the captured data using the Export command in the Signal Tap or Intel Cordis Prime file menu. A different way of viewing the captured data is through the creation of a list file. A list file is a simple text file where each row corresponds to the signal states of all the signals within a single captured data sample. The key at the top along with the columns and column headers indicate what the signal level is for a particular signal within a particular sample. This makes it easy to see the raw captured sample data generated by the logic analyzer. So that completes the general debugging flow for using the SignalTap Logic Analyzer. 
Over the course of this training, we created and configured a signal tap instance, compiled the design, programmed the target device, ran the logic analyzer, and examined the captured data. However, the tool has a number of additional useful features. You may find some of these extra features extremely helpful depending on your unique debugging needs. Here is a list of the features we'll look at in this section. As always, for more details on a particular feature, see the Debug Tools user guide, linked to at the end of this training. Let's start with advanced triggers. With an advanced trigger, you can create more complicated logic expressions for trigger conditions, giving you more control over the trigger's definition. You select to create an advanced trigger using the trigger type list at the top of any trigger condition column in the node list. When a column is set to use an advanced trigger, a new tab is added to the signal tap window. Switching to the new advanced trigger tab opens the advanced trigger condition editor, a simple graphical interface for defining an advanced trigger expression. In this editor, drag and drop tapped signals or groups from the node list and attach them to the logic defining objects to form a trigger expression. The advanced trigger occurs when the expression defined at the top of the editor evaluates to true. The result equation at the top of the editor constantly updates to represent the expression defined by the objects placed in the window. Any signal or group of signals can be dragged out of the node list and dropped in the main window, but only trigger-enabled signals are listed. Objects such as comparison or logical operators can be dragged out of the object library list. Double-clicking an object lets you adjust settings specific to that object. Objects with a white background, such as the greater than, less than, and value objects shown here, can have their settings adjusted during runtime without recompilation. Objects in the editor automatically connect together when they are placed near each other. Right-clicking empty space in the editor window gives additional options, such as the ability to zoom in and out of the editor, automatically clean up the placement of objects, as well as center the objects in the display. The editor is very flexible and intuitive, making it easy to create complicated expressions. Along with the built-in objects, you can create your own custom objects written in HDL code. Custom trigger HDL objects can be used along with the built-in objects to create completely customized trigger conditions. To create a custom object, write an HDL design that includes all the listed required signals. Data in represents the data coming into the custom object from a tapped node, group, or other object, while trigger out is the single bit Boolean output result. You can even add an optional signal named pattern in that can be used to adjust the behavior of the custom object during runtime. The completed code must either be in a separate file added to the Intel Cordis Prime project or included in an existing file that's already a part of the project. Add the custom trigger HDL object to an advanced trigger and double click it to edit its properties. This object has three properties. Custom HDL module name must be set to the name of the custom HDL code as shown. Configuration bitstream sets the initial value for pattern in. If this property is blank, it is assumed that pattern in is not used in the HDL code and that the custom object is not runtime reconfigurable. Finally, the pipeline property is used to indicate the number of cycles of latency required for the custom trigger to generate a result. It does not add additional pipeline stages to the trigger object. If this value is zero, the custom trigger is assumed to be completely combinational. After the properties are set, build an advanced trigger expression using the object, compile the design, and run the logic analyzer as usual. Another very useful extra feature is a power-up trigger. All the triggers discussed so far are runtime triggers because the logic analyzer is run and captures data during the normal operation of the FPGA design. However, 
Runtime triggers are limited in that they cannot capture data for events that occur after the device is programmed, but before the Run Analysis button is clicked in the Logic Analyzer. We refer to events that occur during this time as power-up triggers. A good example of an event you might want to capture during this time is signal activity during the reset of a NEOS processor or other reset logic in the design. A power-up trigger lets you capture these types of events. Implementing a power-up trigger is very similar to implementing a runtime trigger. First, enable a power-up trigger for a signal tap instance in the Instance Manager. Then, configure the trigger settings for the power-up trigger. A power-up trigger is associated with a runtime trigger, but some of its settings and trigger conditions can be different. Next, compile the design and program the target device. After programming, clicking Run Analysis in the Instance Manager will offload and display data from the power-up trigger if it occurred. The captured power-up trigger data is highlighted in blue on the Data tab to distinguish it from runtime trigger data. Successive runs of the Logic Analyzer will capture standard runtime trigger events. To enable a power-up trigger, simply right-click an instance and select Enable Power-up Trigger. A different power-up trigger can be associated with each instance of the SignalTap Logic Analyzer. The power-up trigger will appear in the Instance Manager as a child instance to the SignalTap instance it is associated with. By default, the new power-up trigger inherits all the same configuration options as the parent instance. Once changes are made to either the parent or power-up trigger instances, use the duplicate trigger command to quickly copy all options from one to the other if desired. With a power-up trigger enabled in the Instance Manager, the settings in the Setup tab of the SignalTap file window can be adjusted for the power-up trigger separate from the runtime trigger. Power-up and runtime trigger conditions for a particular instance of the ELA are configured simultaneously. To switch between the settings for one or the other, double-click the name of the main signal tap instance or the power-up trigger name in the Instance Manager. It's easy to tell whether a runtime or power-up trigger is being edited. Runtime trigger configuration fields are white as usual, while power-up trigger configuration fields are highlighted in blue in the Setup and State-based Trigger Flow tabs. When configuring a power-up trigger, your configuration options are somewhat limited compared to the associated runtime trigger. This is because power-up trigger settings changes can only be settings that do not normally require a recompilation. This includes the enabling or disabling of trigger condition columns, as well as the adjustment of tapped node level and edge conditions. You can also change the trigger position in the buffer. All other settings are grayed out because the power-up trigger must use the same settings as the runtime trigger. Options that require a recompilation, such as adding or deleting signals from the node list, switching between basic and advanced triggers, and switching between a standard or a segmented buffer are not available. Simply switch back to the runtime trigger to make these types of changes. Also, the number of trigger conditions must always match between the power-up trigger and its associated runtime trigger. But no matter what adjustments are made to the power-up trigger settings, the logic analyzer must be fully recompiled to enable the power-up trigger. Make use of Rapid Recompile or the other features mentioned earlier to help reduce recompilation time. The next few features assist with the process of adding signal nodes to the node list. First is a pro-specific feature that provides a way to capture and analyze signal data beyond what is listed in the node list. In recent versions of the Intel Cordis Prime software, the SignalTap Logic Analyzer can integrate with your preferred third-party simulation tool to give you enhanced signal visibility into selected design hierarchies. Based on the parts of your design you've selected, a simulation test bench can be created from captured signal data. The resulting simulation displays signal data not only for the tapped signals, 
but also for additional signals in the same cone of logic as the selected design hierarchies. You can view a demonstration of this feature on YouTube at the link provided. Here are the steps to implement this feature. First, set up the node list as usual, but add additional nodes to the list, referred to as simulator aware nodes. Once these additional nodes are added to the list, adjust existing trigger conditions to incorporate them or build new triggers based on them. Save the .stp file, compile the project, and program the target device as usual. Then, run the logic analyzer until the specified trigger conditions occur and data is available on the data tab. At this point, you'll create a simulation test bench based on the captured data and generate simulation scripts for running the simulation. Finally, you'll start and run the simulation in your preferred tool. To add simulator aware nodes to the node list, select the highlighted option from the Signal Tap Edit menu or the Node List right click menu. The Simulator Aware Node Finder appears. At the top of this window, click the highlighted Browse button to select one or more hierarchies in your design for capture by Signal Tap and to display in the resulting simulation. Once you've selected a hierarchy, the window displays the clock domains found in the hierarchy. Enable the clock domains you'd like the tool to add nodes for and click Search. A listing of the input signals into the hierarchy is shown, along with what the tool considers key registers based on the inputs and outputs of the hierarchy. Enable or disable the clock domain, inputs, and key register checkboxes depending on what items you want to appear in the node list. Click Insert and the selected items are added to the node list. The tool will indicate that the sampling clock for this instance of the logic analyzer will be switched, if necessary, to the clock domain for the newly tapped nodes. If you selected multiple clock domains, additional instances of the logic analyzer will automatically be created, each using one of the selected clock domains as that instance's sampling clock. Here you can see the additional nodes added to the node list. Adjust the existing trigger conditions or add to them as desired. After compiling the design and programming the device, run the logic analyzer as usual until it triggers and captures signal data as shown. At this point, the simulation test bench can be created by selecting the highlighted option from the Signal Tab file menu. This opens a dialog box similar to what you'd use to create a standard simulation test bench in the Intel Cordis Prime software. You can adjust basic options for the simulation, but in most cases, you would just leave the defaults. The highlighted options must remain enabled to create the simulation stimuli using standard force statements and to generate scripts to run the simulation. All needed files for the simulation are created in the project directory by default. Finally, the simulation is run using the generated script for your preferred simulation tool. The example shown here was run in the Quest2Sim Intel FPGA edition included with a standard installation of the Intel Cordis Prime software. If you look closely and compare to the capture data shown earlier in the SignalTap data tab, you can see matching signal data to what was captured in SignalTap. However, notice that the simulation includes three categories of signals. Signals that were manually tapped from the standard node finder, the simulator aware signals added in step one of this flow, and additional signals related to the simulation aware signals in the selected hierarchy's cone of logic. None of the additional signals were explicitly tapped in the .stp file, and thus did not use additional device resources for their implementation. The additional signals and their resulting data were added to the simulation automatically based on the selected simulator-aware nodes. The results for these signals are inferred based on the logic for them in the design. In this way, 
you can view signal data for many more signals than you could with just manual tapping in signal tap, which can be very helpful when debugging a design. As usual, see the Debug Tools user guide for more information on setting up, configuring, and running the simulation. Debugging finite state machines, especially from the post-fit netlist, can be difficult. Signals must be found using the node finder or the technology map viewer, and there is always the possibility that some signals were optimized away during place and route. The signal tap logic analyzer makes this process much easier by tracking signals that make up state machines through the compilation process. The Intel Cortis Prime software infers state machines from source code, so this feature only works if the design is synthesized using integrated synthesis. By right-clicking in the node list and selecting Add State Machine Nodes, you can instantly tap all the pre-synthesis or post-fit signals for any state machine in the design. When a state machine is tapped, a mnemonic table is automatically created for the state encoding. This table can be used to define trigger conditions and for viewing states in the Signal Tap Data tab. Some optimization settings may prevent this feature from working, so be sure to check the Debug Tools user guide for details. This feature is currently only supported in the standard edition of the Intel Cortis Prime software. Another feature of the ELA is its support for IP plugins. IP plugins provide a quick way to tap a specific group of signals in a selected IP. With an IP plugin, it's not necessary to use the node finder to find and add key IP related signals to the node list. The plugin does this automatically. A plugin may include mnemonic tables to help create trigger conditions for the IP signals. This makes it easy to trigger on common signal states for the selected IP. Plugins may also include mnemonic tables for use on the data tab that can assist in analyzing captured data waveforms. Mnemonic tables included with plugins cannot be edited with the mnemonic table setup command. One IP plugin is included with the ELA. The NEOS plugin automatically taps the program counter and instruction word registers of a selected NEOS CPU instance in a design. The plugin also includes a code disassembly function. Captured data signals are automatically translated into NEOS machine code on the data tab of the signal tap file. Creating a list file from this captured data makes it easy to see the sequence of code executed by the NEOS processor. The ELA also features direct data acquisition into a MATLAB matrix. Data in MATLAB is stored in a matrix format and manipulated using standard matrix operations. Given a working FPGA design that includes a signal tap instance, MATLAB is run on the same computer used to control the logic analyzer. In the MATLAB environment, a program can call a special MATLAB executable, or MEX function, at any time for as many times as needed. Each time the MEX function is called, the ELA runs and captures data based on its trigger settings. Each time data is captured, the data is transferred directly into MATLAB and stored in a MATLAB matrix variable. To make the connection between the logic analyzer and MATLAB work, the signal tap file must be configured appropriately to capture the desired data. Then, the alt signal tap run mex function is called from within MATLAB to open the JTAG connection to the target device and capture data on trigger events specified in the .stp file. The captured data is transferred from the device buffer and stored in a specified MATLAB matrix variable for analysis. If you are interested in using this feature, see the Debug Tools user guide for details. For situations where the FPGA design under test may be at a remote location, either somewhere on your local area network or across the internet, the Signal Tap Logic Analyzer supports remote debugging. For an FPGA design that does not include a network connection, you can set up a computer-to-computer -computer debugging session. For this setup, the local machine you will work on must have a full Intel Cordis Prime software installation. 
The remote machine must be set up with a connection to the board under test, typically a JTAG connection using an Intel FPGA download cable, and either a full software installation or just the standalone Intel Cordis Prime programmer. The JTAG server feature is then enabled on the remote machine, allowing the local machine to connect to the remote machine. You can then run the logic analyzer as if you were sitting in front of the board under test. You can also perform remote debugging by connecting directly to a remotely running FPGA design without the need for a remote machine. For this configuration, the FPGA design must include some type of microprocessor control, such as a Neo soft processor or the ARM hard processor system found in SOC devices. The microprocessor is necessary because the design must be able to set up and control a TCP IP stack for a direct network connection. For more information on remote debugging, see the Debug Tools User Guide as well as Application Note 939, linked here, which describes accessing the JTAG server on a remote machine through an SSH connection. The SignalTap logic analyzer can be fully controlled through the command line or scripted using tickle commands. The command line can be used to enable or disable a particular SignalTap file for a project. You can also compile a design that includes the logic analyzer, start and stop an analysis, as well as control multiple signal tap instances simultaneously. See the listed resources, including the scripting user guide, for details and examples. This concludes the final part of this training. If you missed any of the previous parts, you can register for them for free at the links shown here. To learn about additional resources available to help you with using the SignalTap Embedded Logic Analyzer, continue to the next slide. For more information about the SignalTap Embedded Logic Analyzer, be sure to read the SignalTap chapter in the Intel Cordis Prime Software Debug Tools User Guide. Both the standard and pro edition versions of the guide are linked here. If you'd like hands-on experience with the Logic Analyzer, enroll in the Intel Cordis Prime Software Debug Tools instructor-led training. Besides discussing several other tools that help in verifying a design in hardware, you'll get to work with the SignalTap ELA on an Intel FPGA development kit with direct assistance from an Intel FPGA training engineer. Intel offers many options for learning about our FPGA products and for training on their use. The Intel FPGA YouTube channel contains a number of five-minute quick videos along with longer, more in-depth training. The Intel FPGA training website is the place to go to learn about our recommended curriculum for every type of user and to register for a class. While there, you can register for over 300 e-learning courses made up of narrated slides presented in an interactive player, some of which include labs and demos. You can also register for one of our full-day instructor-led training classes, taught by experienced training engineers, either in person at a local office or virtually over the web. All instructor-led courses have hands-on lab exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need further assistance, Intel FPGA provides many self-help resources. Check out the landing pages accessed from the main Intel website that are dedicated to specific FPGA technologies like high-speed interfaces and external memory. Finally, you can also view and post questions to the community forum, monitored by skilled Intel FPGA application engineers. One more thing. We're constantly updating and improving our training materials, and your feedback helps us create the materials that you want. Feel free to email fpgatraining at intel.com with any thoughts or comments, positive or negative, you may have on this training course. Thank you for your feedback. My name is Steve, and I want to thank you for taking this online training about the SignalTap Embedded Logic Analyzer.